Good evening and welcome to Studio 10 Talks. I am Patrick Cassidy. I am the Artistic Director for Studio 10. And you just witnessed our brand new opening comments. Good? Great, I think. I think it's great. I just, um, I'm like, I'm, I'm verklempt. Verklempt. Does anybody know what verklempt means? I know. Uh, it is so great to be here. This is our second show of our second season. We are now doing Studio 10 Talks uh, once a month, and there is a incredible guest each month. This month we have, oh, I can't tell him yet. I'm not, I'm not gonna spoil him to show his name. It's too good yet. But um, I, wanna, I wanna give a little shout out. Today marks the end of Rosh Hashanah, today. Um, it's, I'm, uh, oh, and Norm Lewis. We had Norm Lewis this weekend. We, we, he was our fifth cabaret there. He was the cabaret on stage that we partnered with Tennessee Perform Performing Arts Center. He was absolutely extraordinary. We had had Shoshana Bean uh, the month of August and Norm in the month of September. What a partnership. It was incredible. Look at that. That's uh, my, uh, Todd Morgan, our managing director, and I and Norm and Reba McIntyre. She showed up and was a part of the show and we talked to her afterwards. It was incredible, he was so good. And we are gonna continue with them with uh, Tennessee uh, Performing Arts Center. So I'll let you know about that. Uh, looking forward, um, Sean Cassidy. I don't know who that is. Sean Cassidy is my brother and he performed this past weekend too at the City Winery, two sold out shows. Well, guess what? We've got Sean Cassidy, Studio 10, on November 13th at the Franklin Theater. Tickets are going to go on sale very soon. You're going to want to grab that. It's going to be our big fundraiser to kick off our season when we announce our, there's so much to talk about. But Sean Cassidy, November 13th at the Franklin Theater. I'm going to let you know about, more about that. Now, without further ado, we have a brand new addition to Studio 10 Talks. We have a new associate producer. She is my... Ed McMahon, for those of you who don't know who that was, he assisted Johnny Carson. He is my Paul Schaefer from David Letterman Show. He is my, he, she, she is my Doc Severinsen. She does not blow a horn though. She is amazing. She is, she is the new Joan Rivers for us, right? Julie Garnier is a performer. And as a performer, she was in the fifth national tour of Cats. Take a look, take a look. There she is, Grizabella in the middle. No, she didn't play Rum Tub Tugger, but she played those cats. She was in Les Miserables, Chicago, and Mamma Mia, all at the Hollywood Bowl in Los Angeles. On TV and film, she did Curb Your Enthusiasm. She did The Closer, and she is the singing voice of Lyria in the Disney animated movie Tinkerbell and the Lost Treasure. There she is. I'm gonna set her up with Prince Hans later in the show. And most recently as a part of the original cast of the first national tour of the Broadway hit, Come Far Away. She is our new producer, Julie Garnier. I can't wait for you guys to meet her. Oh, here she goes. Please welcome Julie Garnier. Hi. <laughs> welcome to Studio Fox. Thank yeah. you, I'm so happy to be here. Lean to your left or right. I want to see the neon you've got. Oh, my God. Studio 10, you've done that. You created that too, right? I did. <laughs> I've, got this, I've got just this, like, Hirschfeld. That, that Hirschfeld of you and Pirates of Penzance. Yeah. Whatever. Many, 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 many years ago. Uh, welcome to the show. We are so privileged to have you here. You are you are an incredible, you're an incredible talent, Miss Garnier. You've done a lot of work. Like I'm, I'm astounded when I read your bio and stuff and, and you've created the new dynamics. You created our new opening. We've got so much, as you'll see, in store for the show. But the one thing I, I want to do with you first, just to show our audience just how gifted you are as a performer. And this is kind of in a little tribute to our guests, one little tribute, is I want you to, sh I want our, our audience to, to hear just a little of how you sing a cappella. So well, would you yeah. mind just on the fly, doing a little bit of, uh, it's not a tough song. That song from Frozen, is it called Let It Go? Yeah. <laughs> Please. Just a little. Okay, Just but I'm really loud. I'm I'm a belter. I'm, that, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to push back. I'm going okay, to. That's good. Just I'm a little. I'm going to go back here. Okay. Let it go. Let it go. And I'll rise like the break of dawn. Let it go. Let it go. That perfect girl is gone. Wow. No. No. 
no, no laugh for YouTube in your face. <laughs> That's a gigantic voice you have. I'm Thanks. never gonna. I'm never gonna let you yell at me during this show. Never. <laughs> Good idea. You, you're amazing. You are absolutely amazing. Well, you're going to be in throughout the show. I'm so happy to have you here, Julie. Are you excited? I am so excited to become a part of the Studio Ten family. This is this is going to be so much fun. We're going to have a blast. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Well, I'll see you in a little while. I'm going to now introduce our main guest for the evening. Sounds good. Have fun. Bye. Our guest um, is remarkable. He is uh, on film and television. He was in NBC's Shades of Blue, recurring seasons one and two. Mozart in The Jungle. He plays Mozart in four episodes of that. Fosse and Verdon. He plays, he plays James Hennigan. Uh, Paper Cop, a comedy short he's really, really proud of. At least that's what he's told me. He, is, he was in Crazy Ex-Girlfriend as Greg Serrano and as Prince Hans in the biggest, highest grossing animated film of all time, Frozen, on Broadway. He was in Sunday in the Park with George, Billy Elliot, Brighton Beach Memoirs, A View from the Bridge, The Importance of Being Earnest, Cinderella, Act One, Hello Dolly, and he is the 2019 Tony Award winner for Tootsie. We are gonna talk about that. Please welcome to the show, without further ado, Mr. Santino Fontana. Hello, hello. Hey, Patrick. Thanks for having me. Oh, Santino, it's so great to have you. How are you? It's so great to welcome you to the show. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm not going to be too loud because my daughter is sleeping, but I'm good. You are. That's right. You're a father. She is now two years old. Is that? She'll is that be correct? two in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Wow. How yeah, is? Crazy. How is? How, how? What's it like being a father for the first time? It's great. I mean, I, uh, yeah, we were today, we were walking and I got her a treat down at uh, Riverside Park and uh, it's great. It's um, everything, all the cliches are true, you know, yeah. like, I, I love it. I can't imagine what my life was like without it. And it's also challenging, but it's great. And this, uh, you know, last year and a half has been, you know, we've all been together the entire time. It's <laughs> <laughs> been great. As you said, no, I, I, I agree with you. I, uh, you know, my children are a lot older now. And I remember my mother saying to me when my kids were in diapers and I was struggling how to work a car seat and all those little things that go with what those first formidable years was, you know, and I would like, you know, I'm stressed. And I, she said, honey, little people, little problems. Big people, big problems. <laughs> That's true. So, so, but it's it is wonderful. It is the most wonderful thing. It is the it's the job that I cherish more than anything is being a dad. So, so let's let's talk about about you and, and and your youth. First of all, where did you grow up? Okay, I was two places. So, Stockton, California, which is like in the cent in Central Valley of California, until I was ten, and uh, and then we moved to Washington State. Uh, a small town in Washington State uh, called Richland. Oh, oh my God! That's look at that! For frightening. So you you want to tell me who all these people are? Well, that's my mom, my dad, my sister, and me. Wow! You really yeah. curly. Look at your curly hair. I know, and it was kind of blonde. You can tell there. Yeah. Is, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And my daughter has very curly hair too, which is actually we look somewhat similar in that picture. So. So oh. Oh I, my God! Who now, is the stalker? Who is the stalker getting all of these photos? Uh, see, well, we we went into your personal like archives, and we Did said you? we have to. Oh yeah. my God! Yeah, that's well, me as a crayon. This, this picture, I know it is. It's a green crayon. I actually thought it was the beginning of your your musical theater career. You're auditioning for Peter Pan or <laughs> Elf musical. Elf, I thought. No, no, <laughs> not at all. That was in. Yeah. Oh my God. That's, yeah, that's, that's pretty inventive. I'm going to be. What made you decide to pick the color green? Oh, do you think? What do you think I chose that? No, I have no, I don't remember. No, I have no recollection. Although I do like that costume and that I think my mom probably made it. Well, the, this, it. this you'll have some sort of, I think at least um, uh, you, you, you'll you feel uh, uh, sorry for me. Uh, back in my day, and I've said this before, they had those costumes that you bought at the supermarket and they were mm -hmm. boxes with a little plastic mask that had a little tie thing. Well, yeah. I waited to the last minute and on October 31st, I ran to the supermarket. Nothing was left except female costumes. So I'm, I went as a seven-year-old as Cinderella. And oh, was, well, that's very 
That's yeah. very fitting. Then it was traumatizing, and I went to therapy for many, many years after that to deal with it. <laughs> Don't let anyone tell you you can't be Cinderella, Patrick. That's exactly That's right. It. That's exactly right. right. Uh, <laughs> speaking of which, uh, what would you say is the show that launched your career? Um. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I think um, I, the, I, when I got out of college, I don't know. I can't answer that. When I got out of college, I was a company member at the Guthrie for two years and uh, did a bunch of different plays. I was in a, in a production. The first thing was a production of Death of a Salesman, which went to uh, Ireland for uh, a little bit for a tour. And, um, and that was kind of like the first step of like, okay, I could actually do this in New York the first job that kind of led to really more regular jobs was Sunny in the Park. And I had a very small part in that. Wow. And look at that. Like began, you know, I went straight from that into Billy Elliot, straight from that into Brighton Beach, straight from that into View from the Bridge, you know. So you so you got so you got the role. Sunny in the Park led to your next Broadway show, which led to your next Broadway which led to Yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, well that's, that's a, my by the way, my favorite show of all time. Sunday Sunday in the park. park? Oh yeah. I saw Sunday in the Park. I saw Sunday in the Park with the original cast five times. I saw, wow. Mandy, I saw Mandy's last show. Oh wow. It was extraordinary. Extraordinary. And um yeah, I was I was a, a super fan of that show. I still think it's one of the greatest piece pieces ever written. Yeah. You know? One of the one really, really cool thing about that show is the you know, the rest of the the, the ensemble. You're off stage for Move On. You're off stage for Lesson Number Eight. All that children in art. In the second act, you're all sitting and you're just listening to. Stop worrying where you're going. You're listening to that over and over and over, and it became this great. By the end, Jessica Malaski and Anne Nathan and all the we'd all be hanging out together, and it's it really affected, I think, our way of. You, you internalize that because mm -hmm. it's the soundtrack to your day to day. Would you ever like to in the future play George? You know, I understudied George. I am so glad I never went on. And Daniel, who was great, Daniel Evans, who was the George in my production, he had his wisdom teeth taken out. And I remember mm -hmm. everyone was like, well, he's having his wisdom teeth taken out. You're going to go on. He didn't miss. Oh. And I was like, he's never going to, those Brits oh. don't mess around. Well, I was just going like, to say, those he's Brits never going to miss. <laughs> so I never went on, which I was fine with, because the idea of jumping into that without having done all of it with all, especially in our production, there's a bunch of tech elements. Um, that would have been horrifying. So I was fine with that. And you um, had you had father son, right? You had Paul Gemiani conducting you and you had Alex in the show as the boatman. Is that true? Paul was not conducting. Uh, there was a British woman conducting uh, Caroline. Like I said, we didn't have Paul Gemiani. <laughs> no, we didn't have, but we did have Alex. Alex, Alex was the boatman. And uh, yeah, the cast was great. Bruno Malley, Jessica Grove, uh, uh, Jenna Russell was amazing. Uh, uh, Michael Cumstie, I'm going to forget people. Mary Beth Peel. Yeah. Yeah, uh, 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 Drew McVitie. There oh, we go. There you are. are you the guy there in the are. back with the top the hat? Hmm? You, Say that again. Are you the guy in the back with the top hat? No, I. That's Drew. That's Drew McVitie. I'm not in yeah. this scene. I oh. was the soldier who had, you know, the other like. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The bo yeah. oh the Robert the Robert Westenberg part is that correct? Yes, the Robert Westenberg part. Mm -hmm. Mademoiselle, I am your friend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so so let's then go forward. So you so you start to do these Broadway shows, and you start to get the role, and you get the role of the Prince in Cinderella, right? Sure. Yeah. Big big part, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's the Prince. He's not the big part, but that was fine by me. I had just done a play off Broadway called Sons of the Prophet, written yeah. by Stephen Karam, who wrote The Humans, and Robin Goodman was the producer, uh, one of the producers there at the Roundabout. And she remembered, I'd done a reading of a musical of Flamingo Kid that she was producing. Oh, yeah. It didn't end up happening. And then it happened with a different team years later. Anyway, she said, this play, which was a straight play, said, do you want to sing again? You haven't sang in a while. And I'm doing a reading of Cinderella. And I was like, I'm not going to play. No, no. I mean, you don't, no one wants me to play that part. 
And she was like, no, 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 it's different. And she sent me the script, which Doug Bean wrote. And the first line was, you know, I killed a giant. And then the, my first line, while my foot is on the body of the giant, was I just wish I was doing something more important with my life. And that was, and then I was like, okay, I get it. I want, yes, I'll, I'll do this. And, um, and then I did, uh, what was the TV show? Oh, A Gifted Man with mm. Patrick uh, Wilson, who, and my classmate, I Cash, was a bizarre story where I played somebody with like a terrifying strain of herpes. It's true. Oh. <laughs> anyway, so it's the truth. That's the truth. And, um, and Patrick, and I was a huge Patrick Wilson. I am still a huge Patrick Wilson fan. I saw him in yeah, two months. He was one of the first uh, Broadway shows I ever saw. And um, he took me and Aya, my co-star and classmate, to uh, lunch or to dinner, you know, on a break. And I was telling him I was choosing between a different play and Cinderella. And he was like, well, you have to do Cinderella. And I was like, why? And he's like, who else gets to sing those? No one else has sung those songs on Broadway. You're going to get to sing Do I Love You Because You're Beautiful 10 minutes ago. Mm. You, have, you, you have to do that. And, um, and even and some of the friends, you know, they said exactly what he said. And I was like, mm, yeah, he's right. So yeah, that was the that was that. Did you like? He he's a very 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 good friend of both myself and close to my brother. Did you like working with with Mr. William Ivy Long? Oh yes, of course I did. Yeah, I was. Um, yeah, I mean, I was in the first season. I think it was in the last episode of that season. I think it only ran that one season. But uh, mm -hmm. no, he was lovely. He, he couldn't have been lovelier. You have had a kind of a amazing career in, 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 in terms of princes, you've That's gotten cool. to play. I mean, look at that. I mean, you've gotten to play one of the most iconic princes ever on the stage with Cinderella. And then maybe the most iconic prince of at least of the new animated films in Frozen with Prince Hans. Prince Hans. It was the same year. Yeah, it was the same. Wow. I was, I was recording the vocals while we were in, I think we were in previews for some of it and then uh, on Broadway and I would fly to LA and we recorded the song together, me and Kristen Bell. And then, um, yeah, it was, a, it was crazy. And you also know, a very different type of prints. You know, Santino, most guys that do animated princes aren't handsome enough, handsome enough to do it on the stage as well. <laughs> <laughs> I can find people who would disagree with you I'm, <laughs> um, or attractive in any way, but uh, yeah, yeah, it was a it was a crazy. Uh, it was my year of the prince. Yeah, it was super fun. Did tell me about tell me about that? You know, I I got very close in my career, very close to the voice, both speaking and singing of Hercules. Um, for Disney, oh. very close. I, I, I went on what they call at the time DAT, like three or four times for Alan Menken, and the executive. Zippel, and they, right? And I, that yes, and and I ended up. I even sang a song that they ended up later cutting from the movie, and they added the you know the big one. I can go to the distance, which became the hit. Um, but tell me what it's like creating that, and 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 forever. I mean forever, you know. Yeah, it's you know it, it was. I, and I've said this before, but I liken it to, you know, it was five days over like two years. So five days over two years. And, and I, I've said this before that it, it feels like uh, I was a sperm donor to it. Someone who becomes president. <laughs> I was kind of involved. I was there, but it was very little amount of work. And then, you know, cause you do of those five days, one day, one entire day, was just sounds. So it was <sighs> that was one whole day. So <laughs> the other four days over two years, you're reading, you know, all of the scenes. And we had uh, Chris Buck and Jen Lee, the director and writer and writer and director. She was also directing it. But um, you know, they're giving you ideas. You're running through it as many ways as you think you can. You're improvising on it. Then they're giving you specific notes line by line. And then you walk away. You have no idea. I never read the script. I had no idea what really, you know, I mean, I knew roughly what it was. And then, um, and I also, I had a friend who had been in an animated, who had been a voice in an animated film that uh, didn't go 
as well as he had hoped. He was like, yeah, you never know. And when we watched the first screening, um, I think we all knew like the cast. We knew it was like, that's, I think that's really good. Um, but you don't know that it's going to be what it became. I mean, it's so, it's, it's just a very strange club to be a part of. And it's a very small <laughs> group of people that yeah, you're you know, right. I walk around and I have that secret if I'm on an I mean and I take pictures all the time if I'm on an airplane and I'm sitting next to a kid who's watching Frozen and I just want to I just want to really surprise them but oh I don't. My gosh. or you go to Disneyland and they're like dressed as the characters and yeah. you're, you know it's such a strange like and do you ever do you ever out yourself in those situations no, no I never do no because kids don't if you if they listen to it they get it so i've i've left voicemails for like happy birthday from yeah. prince mm -hmm. like to P and then they they freak out cuz like how does he know me how does you know i think of like if robin williams left a voicemail to me as the genie <laughs> i'd be losing my mind um but when you meet them and you tell them they don't buy it you know they're like oh this santa sure. your prince Hans. i'm like no no he didn't and and <laughs> you're right and if they're really little kids and you were to out yourself, they might look at you and it might have a panic attack. No, you're exactly. not what I envision. I, like I know what he looks like. Yes. He's Santa Claus. I yeah. know what he looks like. Yeah, no, yeah. I get it. Yeah, wow. Yeah. It's a bizarre, wow. um, but cool. Yeah, it's cool. And when you did it, were you actually in the studio with Only Christine? one of the days or two of the days. Well, well, one of the day was I in a studio in LA. And that was the day we recorded the song with Kristen. And that was it. And that was it. The other times we're all here in New York um, around my show schedule in a studio. And then they would, uh, this is before Zoom, which, mm. but whatever, I don't know how they did. We were able to see each other and uh, uh, not the other actors, the, the creatives. And then, um, yeah. We, we have an interesting photograph of you. When you did Cinderella, I want you to explain this photograph to me. This is terrifying. Oh, yeah. That was just doing some back bends. Some back <laughs> just some back bends. Here's what yeah. I'll tell you. You know why, though? So my shoes, this is also, I was an idiot. So in the show, <laughs> in the lyrics, it said, uh, uh, Cinderella has the line, he was tall, very tall. Right. Mm -hmm. So I went to the director, Mark Broca, who was lovely. And I was like, so what are we going to do about that, that lyric? And he was like, what do you mean? I was like, it says he was tall, very tall. I could get, I could see in a world of people who are not giant, someone saying I'm tall, kind of. But no one's going to describe me as very tall. So we've got a problem. Either we have to change the lyric. I'm like, well, that's not going to happen. Uh, okay, so I went to William Ivy Long, costume designer, and I was like, let's do it. So there was a two-inch heel on the boot, and then there was two inches inside the boot that you can't see. So the entire show, I'm standing <laughs> on an <laughs> incline, and I had to, you know, take care of my body. So and I was on, and, on, and, on, and on a rake stage as well? No, it wasn't a rake stage. Thank <laughs> God it wasn't a rake stage. But... um. Uh, yeah, so I was, you know, just keeping it limber, just staying active. You know, yeah, you now I I also like her. Did you have some? I was I was wondering if it was doing that same exercise on view from a bridge. Did you have a head injury? I did. That? What I happened? I uh, there was a fight scene in this show where um, I was thrown onto a table and I uh, hit my head. Hit the oh, back of my head, and um, in in, I, in, a, in a performance or in a rehearsal? Yeah, in a preview. Yeah, wow. we were like a weekend, and um, I had a buddy. One of my best friends is a doctor. He was in med school at the time in New York, and I hit my head, but I didn't think too much of it, and it hurt. But I finished the show, and uh, I went home, and called him and just said, Hey, so I hit my head. I think I'm fine. Anything I should know. And he was like, well, have you thrown up? I was like, no. He's like, then you're fine. He's like, unless you throw up, you're fine. Mm. I went to bed. I woke up at three in the morning and then I threw up and, oh. uh, and then fell back asleep, which was terrible. 
uh, good news is I'm totally recovered and fine now, but I had a contusion on my brain. So I had a, basically a bruise on my brain. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. so very, not just concussion, serious, really serious. No, yeah, it was. Yeah, it took like a year all in to get back to normal. I mean, the good thing is my memory now is better than it was before because the you do all these exercises, cognitive exercises to get, you know, your brain back to where it was. I, I, I need to have the injury because I need to get my memory back. You know, or just, just teach me the exercise. Not, so it's not, the not worth almost dying. Over. Just, just teach me the exercises. I'll, I'll avoid it one of the, it's great. It's like, they're really basic. It's like, there's a list of like 50 things and you have to memorize them. And the way you do it is by creating a story, connecting each one and how oh, are you yeah. going to connect each of them. And then pretty, actually pretty instantly, you're able to just start reciting it. So, yeah, I, sh I, I should have used that when I started acting because I was doing it thousands of times in a row. <laughs> well, that's similar. I mean, that's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, yeah, it's a muscle. It's like anything. Yeah. The more you do it, the better it gets. Tell me about Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Crazy Ex-Girlfriend was during, I was doing, was I doing act one? I was doing act one and really? had an audition for this mu musical TV show, which was going to be at the time was going to be on Showtime. It was a 10 episode, half hour show and uh, auditioned and didn't think I had a shot. Got did the pilot. And then, you know, this process. And then like you wait and you wait and you wait. And then like right before um, the contract was up, uh, CW got it from Showtime, turned it into an hour long show. Went to LA, did it right after my wife and I, uh, we got married, did the first season, we're waiting to hear if it was coming back. And um, I lined up some other things and then it did come back. I had a one year contract. And so having just gotten married, it made little sense to be a part as long as that would have required me to. But well, then, so then your time was a little short lived for the show. But you made yeah, it was rather, like, I did like two seasons. I did like a season and then I came back to wrap up my arc for the second season. Yeah. You but you made an incredible impression. And when he says he's being humble when he says yeah, it was a musical thing, I'm, we're gonna show a clip to our audience just how incredibly talented oh, okay, you are and and on this show. Check a look, Santino Fontana, crazy ex-girlfriend. <laughs> Song and dance man, song and dance man, man look at you. Yeah, that was right. At, we shot that right after the wedding. Like the first thing was it right after. Oh, speaking of which, I think we actually have a couple of wedding pictures of you. Your oh, God. Lovely you wife. hacked into my computer. Yes, that's, that's right. Good. There we go. <laughs> that's gorgeous. Where was that? Where'd you get married? On Tiora Mountain House. It's in the Catskills up by oh, Kingston. I highly recommend it if anybody's getting married. It's beautiful. It's really great. We just had our, uh, our uh, anniversary, September 5th. Yeah. Now tell me, tell me about your wife. She she is an incredible performer, singer, uh, yes, act, yes. actress. Tell, tell me, tell me about her. Her name is Jessica. We met at Birdland, actually, Julian, mm -hmm. Julian, uh, 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 and on my birthday in two thousand eleven. And wow. um, you know what can you say? She's I, I yeah, she's my better half. I, I say the same about mine, and and, it, and that's twenty eight years ago. So twenty eight, yeah. We just had six. I think I looked it up. That's like the wood anniversary. Of, <laughs> of anything, like wood. Mm -hmm. A nice, a nice plaque. A good plaque. Yeah. Also, <laughs> why, we have not talked yet. I would love to talk about my wife, but we haven't talked about how I first saw you on I, tour. I, I, you know, I'm so glad that you're bringing, in fact, Santino, will you take off this over the show? Cause I'm really failing. I just think we need to, so here's what happened. He reached out. Would you want to do this show? Yeah. yeah. I looked up the show and I was like, Patrick Cassidy, I know that name. I looked up the show and all these amazing people did it. I'm like, of course I'll do the show. And I was like, that's Patrick Cassidy from Assassins and from the national tour of Aida, which I saw when I what was it, what year is it? Ninety nine. When I was yeah. in high school in Seattle, I saw him star as what is the character's name? Rodimus. 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 Also a prince, wasn't he? Uh, yeah, Egyptian. Yeah, Egyptian prince. That counts. 
That's a prince. So I saw uh, and I saw him on uh, on tour when I was in Seattle, and I was a young, you know, hopeful child. So there you go. Was I any good? You were great. I remember <laughs> you were great. You were all great. I, I, I wish I remember. Uh, Kristen Wee was in that cast, and she's a friend of mine. And yeah, I see her in it. Um, but yeah, I had a great time. I was like, oh, that's. I so I was. Uh, I, I think I told you when you had mentioned to me that you, you'd seen the show in Seattle. And uh, and by the way, Seattle, the cleanest downtown metropolitan city in the country by far. That's right. The rain that soaks that pavement sparkles <laughs> and shimmers. Oh, it's gorgeous. But I missed a show. I told you this in Seattle. At, at In other words, I, I did half the show and I was so sick that I couldn't do the second half. And I was paranoid that that's the show you saw. <laughs> wasn't that wasn't the show? So I yeah, did no, both acts. Good, good, good. Um, oh, I want to show just a couple other things about uh, Julie. Bring up uh, Mozart in the Jungle photo with Gael. Look at you! Look at you in the powder. Just a little room. ill there, don't I? Just a little <laughs> sickly. <laughs> a little bit of color. You what an extraordinary what an extraordinary career you've had. I, um, Tell me, okay, okay. So, do you know what you sang? By the way, I'm just curious to get uh, Prince Hans what you sang for your audition. Of course, I do. Yes, of course, I know what I sang. I sang. Um, so, they had told me. So, okay, they they said they didn't know that much about the character at the time. They knew that he was going to be the love interest, but also potentially. The villain we didn't know that for sure they thought he was going to be funny at the time they thought he was going to be conceited mm. um so i was like oh god that's so helpful and i <laughs> took, um, and i so i changed the lyrics to i feel pretty i ran it by sondheim uh, and, did that. <laughs> and um because he doesn't need to know he's busy no, no, no. A lot going on. No, and no, um no. i turned it into i am pretty and they sang it as a like uh, more of a Gastoni person than it, the Perfect. character would be. But Perfect. yeah, that was what I sang. Well, um, so one of the things that we, we do on Studio 10 Talks, if you saw the show shows, we've done it for quite some, is we play a couple games. And one of the games we play is a game called Remember the Lyric. And there it is. And in lieu of of our brand new producer, who you know, and the incredible talent of Miss Julie Garnier, we are going to bring her back to do this game with you. So come back, Julie. And there she is. Hi. So, <laughs> so, so I normally do this game, but Julie's far prettier, and uh, and she's perfect for this particular song. So the way the game works, is Santino, is that we're going to sing a lyric. Julie's going to start uh, from a show that you did. Okay. And it's a song that you sang. Uh, and once Julie gets her portion of the lyric and or lyrics, she will point to you mm -hmm. and you will then come in with your side of those lyrics. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> ready, ready, or ready. I'm, not I'm, not good at this. I'm already I already know I'm not gonna be good at this, but yes, yeah, <laughs> just so you know, just so you know in the past, I sang, I sang Don't Cry for Me, Argentina with Patty Lapone. I sang If I Loved You with Kelly O'Hara. I sang I Got Life from the movie of Hair with Treat Williams. Oh, and Joanna with Victor Garber. I sang some good ones. So oh, Julie, wow. you're ready. Okay. Okay, here we go. All right, I'm terrified, but yeah. Uh, believe me, I am too. Because <laughs> <laughs> I just learned this song today. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be great. <laughs> All my life has been a series of doors in my face. And then suddenly I bumped into you. I was thinking the same thing. Because like, I've been searching my whole life to find the, my, oh shit. Uh, <laughs> I've been searching my whole life to find my own place. And maybe it's the party talking or the chocolate fondue. But with you. But with you, I found my place. I see your face. And, and it's, it's nothing, nothing like, like I've, I've ever known before. before. Yep. Love is an open, open door. door. 
Love's an open, Love's an open door. Love's an, Love's open, an open, open door, door with, with you. With you. With you. Love's an open, Love's an open door. door. Yeah, that's what we wanted. That's exactly what we wanted. We, oh my God, that was, I think that might be, I think that was the best we've ever done. No. That was the yeah, although, Impossible. <laughs> Victor knows, Joanna. They all know those songs. I think I sang a whole verse at, at the bridge with Audrey McDonald of uh, Wheel, Wheel, uh, Wheel of Dreams. Yeah. Wheels of the Dream. Wheels, Wheels of the Dream. Yeah. And it was, oh, God. <laughs> that was awesome. Julie, bravo. Santino, Thank you. Bravo. Thank you. Wow. Not a Balter song either. No, and I normally do all the Elsa stuff. So this was. Uh... <laughs> So we a little bit of a departure for me, but that was super fun, my friend. That was really you fun. You great. <laughs> so, Jules, I'll see you in a minute. I've got, we're going we're gonna to give uh, Santino a little surprise here. So this just, came, this just came over the radio airwaves, Santino. We have a special guest here. A surprise okay. guest. This is your life, Santino Fontana. This is terrifying. Uh, you okay? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a hint. You guys, um, you guys did a show together. Uh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> please, please say hello to the incredible Julie Halston. Oh, <laughs> Julie! Oh my Halston. God. Tony winner Julie Halston. Tony Award winner Julie Halston. Um, How we were texting today. No, I know we were texting today, and of course. I didn't know Patrick and Julie and Santino if I was going to be able to do this because I was filming today. She's oh, a, you're a working no, actor, I, no. I can't keep up with all of her no, work. No, you no one no has idea. worked more in a pandemic yeah, exactly. than the nurses in this no, it, it, no, it's crazy. I am doing two TV shows. Yes. Uh, Off-Broadway show. I got a Tony. Um... I was doing an independent film today. Yeah, yeah. Another job? What's yeah, going another on? job. Another, yeah, another job. But and listen, where are you? Are you in a woodshed? What's behind you? <laughs> no. Where I, are you? In a sauna? I am in, I am in Brooklyn in my boyfriend's oh. apartment. And he has a fireplace, I see. Uh, he has a fireplace. A wood-burning fireplace. Yeah, oh, it's a whole thing, darling. <laughs> Climate change um, is real. He just walked fine. in. He just walked in. Um, I no. still haven't met him. Yeah, no, I know, but you're gonna meet him. So you're gonna meet him. You're gonna meet him. But here's the thing, guys. Um, because I'm working so much during a global pandemic, you know that means that by next year, I'll either be dead or <laughs> or completely unemployed. Completely. Well, just, that unemployed. would prove it means, it, means that you're it means that you're tested a lot, Julie. A lot. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not working next year, it just means. You know, there is a God and there's fairness in the world. Yeah, no, I understand. That's... No, I, I totally understand. But first of all, Patrick, can I just tell your viewers, listeners, whatever, what a joy it is to be on a stage with Santino, who also is a terrible, there we are. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, my God. I miss it. I miss it. I miss it. Yeah. But he's also a kind of a terrible trickster. Oh, he is. Oh, yeah. He's kind of a terrible trickster. Not, it's not like Brooks Eshman kiss, sir, because that's just that's just illegal. But he's the kind of guy like if you say a word a tad differently than you did the night before, he'll raise an eyebrow, <laughs> give a look, and then he'll throw you. And I'm like, oh shit, did he just do that? Did he just raise the eyebrow? But honestly. He is truly one of the most talented human beings uh, on the planet. On the planet. Uh, I, I agree just from our little show and, and the research that I've gotten to do all week on him. I, uh, he and I had not met before, at least I, he had seen me, but I had, but uh, yes, a true, true talent. He really oh is. no, it's, it's, it's kind of nuts. I mean, he's like writing, producing, direct, he can do it all. And, and uh, it's, this, I really do think, will be a Santino Fontana decade. I really do. And don't well, forget yeah. me. Don't forget me. 
<laughs> well, he's already he's already taking over as the host for Studio Ted Talk. So we're, we're, no, we're, we're, no. We're, we're, <laughs> yeah. No. Julie, you are so you are so special to jump in and and come on a uh, spur of the moment and jump well, on the show. Well, it was my world. pleasure, and I will say I just left Chip Zion, who literally kept me laughing all during the filming, telling terrible show business stories like you know all his all the times he's been fired oh. all the time <laughs> no 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 terrible show business stories and working with the most horrible people on the planet <laughs> and we were howling with laughter was one of them Patrick Cassidy? Chip's a great No. Guy. <laughs> oh, no, it, wasn't it was you. so great. It was so Julie, great. Julie, Julie I, I'll, leave, I'll leave you. Before you leave, I just want to show you. We have a nice little photograph of the two of you backstage. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I remember that day. That was a great dressing room. That was the best. And that was Santino's dressing room. We loved it. We loved wow, it. Yeah. We loved it. You well, so I got to go because, you know, I have a boyfriend to kill. Yeah, you have a fire to make. you got yeah, another and, and, job. And literally and figuratively. Okay. Okay. Bye -bye. Such oh, a pleasure. <laughs> get a hotel room. Patrick, okay. great to see you. Sandy. You too, Julie. Great to see you. Thanks, Julie. Love you. Wow. She's you great. Get to, you get to work with really talented people. And by the way, and now we're bringing on no, we just what no, what, what no, a show. No, no. <laughs> Did you ever see? You're too young. Did you do? Do you ever see the Ralph Edward show? This is your life. I never saw it, but I know the reference. What it, what no, Ed, it, it, like and how it works? Yes. Yeah, they did. They did one of my mom. It was it was pretty. It was pretty amazing. Um, well, being that we just had Julie, let's talk a little bit about the last Broadway show you did. Yes. Uh, so, so you said this to us when we were talking, which I think is the most hysterical thing. You, how would you uh, uh, refer to yourself in regards to your Tony win? Oh yeah. Um, well, I'm. I. So I didn't say this. So I can't remember. I think it was Robert, the book writer. I'm the longest reigning Tony winner in history, which we all are. Everyone from that year, we're yep. all still the. You know, you're the reigning champs. Yeah. The longest. The longest reigning of all the years, of all the times. Yes, that's true. Well, we're going to show uh, a little trailer and then we're going to talk about uh, your Tony win. So take a look at this. I am a great actor, Stan. You have one of the worst reputations in this town. No one will hire you. Something's wrong with Biscuit. Next. Carla, I threw it all away for Get you. Get out. People hate you. No one hates me. No one likes you. Excuse me, excuse me. Oh, yes, hello. Hi, my name is Dorothy Michaels. A one, two, watch me. Fussy arm, fussy arm. Julie Tamor, Julie Tamor. This is textbook Broadway, people. Don't you find being a woman right now complicated? Right now, extremely. Yeah. won't let you down because you believed in me and now anybody can see I'm really alive I won't let you I like what you do Okay, eight shows a week. Yeah, baby. Doing that part. That's that's like Maria in The Sound of Music, literally, and in a dress and heels. How was that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah, it was a lot, but it was great. I mean, I and I don't think I've ever seen that uh, trailer. Okay. I've never seen, seen that, yeah. I miss yeah. all those people. I miss that cast a lot. Were you, were you never off stage? Was it one of those parts? There were two scenes, there were two scenes uh towards the end oh well, yeah, yeah i mean there wasn't a moment there was very no there wasn't really a moment where i wasn't having to 
there was a, some type of a quick change going on backstage. I think there was there was one brief scene in the second act where I had a couple minutes to grab some water right before the end of the show, and then the curtain call. I was I was told twenty seven costume changes. Yeah, twenty seven. Yeah. Okay, so for some for for the people that don't know. What goes on the stage, which looks miraculous and how actors do it and stuff like that, the real show is what goes on backstage with yes. these 12, 27 costume changes and the people that put you in those outfits and how quickly. And the, I mean, what was that show like? Yeah, it was incredible. I mean, we I uh, it was really amazing. They, I have to say, like my dresser, Lauren Galatelli, Kowalski, that's her married name. And uh, uh, Margot Lawless was super helpful. Brian Strumwasser, who's, who did uh, hair and, and makeup. And there was like, at one point, there were, I think, eight dressers, uh, do, including fingernails and doing all that, like. Um, well, they had to dress two people. They had to dress two people. <laughs> and I had stuff under, you know, I had a corset thing and a, it, was a, it was a whole. Yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot. Uh, but all those, you know, they're so. Those backstage uh you know they're geniuses the, the, their ability to also roll with it when it changes because it's going to every day every mm -hmm. night every performance mm -hmm. something else is going to go wrong slightly and they have to know what to do you know and how to do it um that was the scariest part of the show i mean the performance st stuff was challenging but it was fun because it was like oh great i get to juggle all these balls let's see how it goes and then the fear was like, please tell me the zipper's not stuck. Please <laughs> tell me the bra didn't fall off. Right. Please tell me, you know, all of the things. Oh, I broke a nail. Yeah. Well, those, yeah. Oh, and that happened all the time. You know, the nails would fall off because yeah. they had a uh, top stick and the nails would fall off. And I would, anytime I would run off stage and then come back in, I would run off and I would say, pointer, right hand. <laughs> and I would run off, pointer, right hand. And Brian or Michael would grab the, grab the, the the nail that I needed and hand it to me or put it on it right before I would go back on stage. Yeah. They wow. did want to record it, the quick change. And I ultimately was like, guys, this looks scary. Like, I don't want this out. I don't want to be on some show like this where you're then going to show it to me. Where I look like oh, no, definitely. an animal. We would have shown oh, it looked like it looked like um uh 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 what's the word when like those those animals that come in and like eat the carcass like it looked like that vultures yeah vultures it was like vultures like coming I would run off and then it would be like <laughs> and then I would you know emerge it looked so scary to me well so. the show the show was directed by a friend and he was on this show Scott Ellis in fact his sister is on our board uh, Mary oh, wow Duffy. yeah. And he he did he was he did Studio Ten talks very early and and he was wonderful and did you enjoy him? He's amazing. I love Scott. Yes, he yeah. we text all the time. I love him. I um, love him. He's a great and, director. But he's also a great what people and people know this about him. But the the thing that really sets him apart, I think, in addition to his being able to, you know, he's a direct he directs television. He's been Emmy nominated for directing television. He's direct, he directs plays, he directs musicals, he directs new plays, new musicals, revivals of all of them. Uh, but also, he's a really, really good guy. Yeah. That yeah. is not normal. <laughs> <laughs> he is a deeply, deeply decent human being. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, is, I, I couldn't agree more. He... I, I've never gotten to do a play or a musical with him, but he directed the Sondheim Carnegie Hall thing, and I, that's when I. Oh first right, yeah. Many years ago, but he, he's wonderful. What's it like wearing a pair of high heels? Well, you know, I had practice from Cinderella, so it wasn't oh, that good. bad. The heels weren't the hard part. The hard part was the corset. The idea that. And to sing with a corset, hard. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and the, that that the, the idea that women wore those that. Uh, I just, it was, and bras are terrible. Yeah. I just think, I think if men wore bras, it would be, there would be a piece of tape. It would be somewhat, it would be simple. It, I don't know what, but that thing is a nightmare. <laughs> it would be simplified. I was well, just like, why are the straps and the pulling and the, well, get it I want to show, I want to show something that you, so you got one of these. Oh, there we are. You. you got one of these. This is not mine, by the way. 
This was well, my what father. What is it? No, this is, is my, it's my father. From she loves me. He won the mm. won the. But oh, I'm wait, all, duh! I never put that together. Yeah, I want to show though our audience a beautiful acceptance speech, which will tie in a lot of things we've talked about. Take a look at Santino at the Tony Awards in 2019. Thanks so much. Um, I want to thank the American Theatre Wing and the Broadway League for this incredible honor. I'm from a very small town. The Tony Awards was the only way I was able to ever see anybody who professionally made a living in the arts. It was incredibly important to me as a child. I have to thank my pa my parents and my sister who are back in Washington State, the one that's like the, the stamp, um, they, uh, um, for always being supportive and never telling me no. For my grandfather, uh, for telling me the power about storytelling and imbuing that passion into me and telling me I can. For my uh, uh, Tootsie family, I love you. You're at the party do not leave do not leave um uh my wife i love you jess none of this would be possible nor would it be worth it without you or our baby girl that will be coming and i can't wait for her to come um and also um uh there are two people that i have thought of every day since we started my grandmother who uh passed away a while ago named delmira pereira who was a fiery red-headed woman with a singular voice and a passion and a spirit that you wanted to walk into the room every day i get to bring her into the room and it's been the best experience of my life um also ken washington was a teacher and a mentor who single-handedly changed my life by telling me you are an actor and anything that you don't anything that you do that doesn't help feed that is a waste of your time and he told me he also took my hand and told me that the skills that i would need in order to tell other people's stories and be able to get rid of all the crap and focus on the soul of a person so that we can all come together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Santino, you can never drink a Red Bull ever in this world. <laughs> well, you know why? <laughs> Here's the thing. First of all, I've never seen that. That's the first time I've actually watched it. But the, um, ugh, so many stories. The, re <laughs> the reason, first of all, that, that award is you know, they do like the best play and then the best musical next, and then you're done. So it's 11 o'clock, <laughs> we've all been there. We were up at five in the morning and they they drill into you if you go over. Right. Those, you know, so go. I was in, at, on the, also it's just so, my wife was pregnant. I was sick at that time. There was a lot going on in my life. And I was like, I got I to gotta get everything out that I wanted to say. I didn't well, really know what I was going to say. You I did like, it beautifully, and you were emotional. Your grandmother. Oh, my God. I mean, you really, you were great. My grandfather great. passed away just uh, just after that also, too. Oh. Um, yeah. Well, what a career, man. I am, First of all, I'm so honored to meet you, to get to know you. You know, we've had, we've been doing uh, Studio 10 Talks now for a year and a half, and I've gone through my uh, cell phone. Oh, we have, a, <laughs> we have truly a gift to all of us. Thank you so much for being you. That's from Diane Stewart. Oh, uh, you are, you you know, so now so many of the guests that I'm, that are coming on the show are people that I haven't had the pleasure to work with or the pleasure even to know. I had this thing with Audra McDonald. I always wanted to meet her, never worked with her, and we met on this. And so it is, I'm so honored to meet you and you and to hear about your, and see your talent. And you, you're, you, gosh, we're, we're coming back and you're going to, what's, what's next for you? That's oh, who I'm knows? Doing. Let's, let's just hope to get a job. Maybe Julie Halston can get me a job. Um, <laughs> I want to thank you, though. I want to thank you for the uh, I'm honored to be asked. I mean, the, the list of people that you have had is a, uh, is a very special list of people. So I was uh, flattered and honored. Um, what do I have next? The you know, there's like little stuff that there's stuff that I filmed this year that I don't know really when it's coming out, some of which I can't even really talk about. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, waiting for the right next thing. Who knows? Tootsie 2 or Lacoste. No, that's not Lacoste. happening. That's, the revival no, of Lacoste. I checked that box. I, I'm good. I'm no, good with that. No more dressing heels. We play one final game on the show. Uh, we always do it at the end. It's called You Become the Host. And you get to ask me one question. Any, any question. Any question. One question. Hmm. Okay. Um... Mm, I have so many questions that I want to <laughs> ask about. I want to talk about assassins. I want to talk about, I feel, see, I, I wish I could do it. I wish I could just like come out with a lyric and make you sing the next one. <laughs> I, I know it as well. 
Um, <laughs> I live right, you know, I live, one of my things I'm most proud of is that I'm friends with John Weidman that makes me oh. so happy. And he also is a neighbor of mine. He lives not far from me. But um, I want to know, at which point, did you ever think during Assassins, like, this is a mistake? Like, or were you ever afraid in terms of, because I know there was a lot of crap at oh, the beginning. Controversy, the controversy yeah. every night. Yep. Did you ever fear, I guess, were you ever afraid in that process? I, that's, a, that's a great question. I was not. But when I did, when we did the 30th reunion show with the entire cast, and of course, us, us Steve and John and uh, Jerry Zaxxon, many of the cast said they were. Yeah. Uh, especially after the Gulf War broke out and you could hear a pin drop in the audience, uh, they they were. But now when I think about it, they were all playing the assassins. I was playing the balladeer, the voice of reason. <laughs> you know, okay. I was like one of the good guys. So but but I, I, ne I never had an, a, any fear of it. I I was so in like in awe of being with that cast, with those creators, watching the collaborative thing that went on I, I was just i was like a kid in a candy store the, the whole process everything from the at, afterwards when we did the recording of the album when i went on to do carnegie hall with victor garber every single moment of it was this constant like and when again when we did the reunion show everybody said the same thing yeah lee wolkoff said it was the greatest moment of his career to get to do that show really and, uh, yeah for all the obvious reasons that most actors whoever get to originate a Sondheim show would say. Yeah. yeah, I remember as a kid listening to that scene with Victor that was like eight minutes. Yeah. Like in what world, like, are they recording scenes like that? And it's just so exciting. It's so thrilling. And, and the brilliance that John came up with this idea that that Lee Harvey Oswald is in the Texas School Book Deposit Depository. Is the president is on the tarmac, and he comes and he's there not to kill the president, but to kill himself. Yep. And John yep. Wilkes Booth shows up and convinces him to kill. Yeah. Him. That's I mean, who thinks like that? It's, he's fucked up. Yeah. He's, <laughs> <laughs> but it's also that's why it's so great. Like it's so theatrical, and yet it, and so guttural and visceral and Deb and I mean the whole cat. Yeah, I did. I, you know, when I went into, I went into Hello Dolly just for like a, a little stint because uh, uh, Gavin Creel was injured and uh, they asked me to go in, but it was with Jerry and mm -hmm. Victor. Yeah. And yeah. Bernadette. Yeah. And my childhood self of knowing, you know, that show Inside and Out, knowing that album and Victor. And um, yeah, it was, it was awesome. Well, so. Great question. Uh, such a pleasure. And, and my I, pleasure. And I look forward to uh, to seeing you on stage, and I look forward to to talking with you again. You're you're a joy, my friend. Thank you, and I hope to be in. I hope to come to Tennessee. I've only been to Nashville once, briefly. But do you that, do you have a cabaret show? I do. Oh, <laughs> Studio Tang reaches out. I probably worry in the same way Norm worried. Is anyone going to come? <laughs> They're going to come. We'll sell you great. Pleasure, Santino. Thank My you. My so pleasure. Much. Thank you for having me. Okay, pal. Julie, come back and join me. What a show, huh? You're muted. Oh, no. There I'm, it was amazing. Amazing. Did you, did you yeah. Enjoy? Oh, I mean. Santino's an incredible guest. He's oh so God. lovely and has such great stories. And I loved every second. The talent off, off the charts, off the charts. Uh, Jules, it is so great to have you a part of this. I am looking forward to the shows we create going forward. Um, we're going to, we, our next show will be in October. And then we have a very special show in November. Um, uh, what do you think? How do you think, how do you think you did? Pretty good. I think you did good too. I think I, I did okay. I think you did great. So we we, cl we closed the show with uh, a little goodbye song, and uh, oh, yeah. it's we kind of do a little kind of off the cuff uh, uh, goodbye something. So do you have any ideas? Do you have a song? I think I only know one. 
I think I only know one goodbye song. Okay. <laughs> do, so, do you so remember I'll, the group? Do, you, do I just sing it or do yeah, I? You sing it and I'll try to join you if I know it. Oh, okay. Um, goodbye, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Do, 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 do. <laughs> goodbye, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Do, 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 do. There's another little part I can't remember, but it's Sha Na Sha Na Na. It's a good choice. We've never done that one. I know. Oh, you haven't? No. The the end of it is good night, sweetheart. Good night. Good night. That's, yeah, that's the end. That's I think the only goodbye song I know. I should know more. I mean, I should know. I should learn more. Mean that I have you at the end right here. Let's just try this. Go like this. Dating game. <laughs> Good night, all. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thanks, Drew.